that's how you beat Lex Luthor, and that's how you kill Superman. Exactly. But well, not this doomsday shit, sorry. <laughs> Alamor put a curse on me! Amazing! But RC Grant Morrison, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> Do your worst. <laughs> Spit on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I had that. Uh, when, when Tarantino came here, uh, he was shaking hands with a lot of people, so I shook his hand. Oh, Tarantino, oh, again. Oh, can I get a picture? And Tarantino goes, So, uh, so shaking my hands not enough? Guys, besides Alan, Alan was the ultimate. Alan Moore was the ultimate. I would love to have uh, Charles Vess. Okay. Uh, come on. Because uh, I'm a big fan. He's done. Charles Vess has done work on Promethea, on Spider Man, on Sandman, yeah, on Bone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I love all those things. Okay, wouldn't you want to interview, let's say, a, re a super recluse like Steve Ditko? Is he still alive? No, Steve Ditko died a few years died ago. Died now, no? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. okay. But I would have loved to. Remember that, ano, that documentary when si Gaiman had to knock in his ass in his apartment? That was when Neil Gaiman turned into a fanboy. <laughs> yeah, he was a fanboy. He was like, he gave me comics. Steve Ditko gave me comics. Oh, that was a game, man. It's like us. <laughs> it's nice. It's a it's a cool moment. Yeah. Do, do, do you plan to like do your own stuff? Do you want to be a creator also soon, or is that in the works? Yeah, for the longest time I said no. Uh, I say I just hate every part of the creative process. <laughs> like, it's like I feel like I would have liked having written something without doing the work. Yeah, yeah I get you. <laughs> Uh, but I, I think you. I hate the work. Yeah, yeah I get you. <laughs> um, it, but uh, I did write something recently. I did write a couple of things recently, and I got a couple of artists for it. So we'll see how those turn out. Great. Anyway, right. What's the title? Uh, I, divulge it. I cannot, because one of them is um, one of them is for an established character. Ah, okay. Ah, so it's a fan fiction. Uh, I've, Are you I've to spoken to the creators of that character, and it's we're we're script? trying to work something out. Oh. Um, and uh, the other one is if I give the title, it's a bit of a spoiler. So, okay, yeah, so wag na muna. I will wait for it. Alang. Uh, what would be your dream if you're gonna be a creator of something? Oh, there's smoke. We have smoke in the studio. <laughs> it's okay, it lends an air of mystery and it looks like a thought balloon. We're like uh, ethereal. Uh, what would be your uh, uh, if you're gonna be a, a creator or or, or uh, involved with a character, what would be your dream character? Superman. Why? Um, Interesting. No one. Nobody wants to write this too much, man. Oh, why? Why Superman? Because Superman is is, uh, and I'm totally stealing this from Mark Russell. Superman is uh, a thought experiment on the best of us. Yeah. Right. So it's like, what would you do? If you had right. that power, right. because as an adult, right, um, I relate more to Superman than I ever did. Because really? uh, as a kid, right, as a kid, the appeal of Superman is he has all these powers, right? Right. But that's also kind of the appeal of Batman. The appeal of Batman. He has money. The appeal of Batman is that he has money. He has all of these toys. He's got a cave to put all of these toys. Mm -hmm. He dates hot women. Mm -hmm. He's got all these playmates. His best friend is Superman and the chief of police. And his father figure is someone he can fire. <laughs> She's fucked up. Now. Right? Yeah. So, and Alfred. So, like, and Alfred. like, if you tell him what to do and he does not like, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> okay? That's the appeal of Batman. Superman has all of this power. And it's all about what he doesn't do. That's right. right? It's all about self-control and restraint. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I think, like, with age, it's something that I've been more and more, uh, something that I've related to yeah. more and more. Like, you know, if you get angry at work. Remember that uh, Justice League Unlimited episode where he fought Darkseid? Dark yeah. Was, I live in a world of cardboard. That was so cool. That's, what, that's the brilliance of that, of that whole thing. Is, uh, so, so Dwayne McDuffie was the one who wrote that. Uh, he basically said, Superman is all about restraint. It's all about control. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you watch the, the, that, that Justice League cartoon, this, the 
S Superman is often seen as a Boy Scout. Right. He's just controlled. He's just a yep. very sarcastic yeah. uh, person who's like in control of like all yeah. of his powers. Yeah. So yeah, it's like Superman is like a thought experiment on like what would you do mm -hmm. if you were the most powerful man alive. I think Gra my favorite Superman besides uh, 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 Red Sun uh, is uh, Grant Morrison's run. Uh, All Star. All Star Superman. What? It's amazing. And then and that was a. Uh, that's, That's the, the first, first time, time you get to see Kalinga Grant Morrison Dito. He made Superman. We now know why he's good. We now know why he, he, he is what he is. Because he sees the interconnectedness in everything. In everything. He sees every fiber of life connected. And when Lex saw that, he turns good. He turns good. That's how you beat Lex Luthor, and that's how you kill Superman. Exactly. But not this doomsday shit. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, the doomsday right. stuff, much like everything back in the day. So I bought that. I bought we that. all bought that, <laughs> and that's Is why they're not shot? worth anything. So, <laughs> but Sorry, my, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> unopened, and I, know I have a one that's open. No, uh, no, no, no. But the brilliant thing about the death of Superman, right? right. It's not the death of Superman. What? It's it's, it's the funeral. That's, That's right. right. It's the funeral and it's how everybody reacts to it. Right. right. And then also all of the replacement Superman, right? Yeah. There's no other event where those characters have stuck for 20, 30 years. No. no. Right? Because hmm. the only thing that comes close is um, the Batman one because people still right. like Bane. Uh -huh. No one likes Azrael, guys. I'm sorry. So, but with Superman, you know, people still use the Cyborg. They still use Superboy. They still use Steel. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I use the Eradicator or whatever. Um, but there's still been no event where something has stuck like that. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Superman's a... When you think about it, he's the most simple yet the most complex in the same time. Uh, I have a theory. Why. I, I told them this. I told the Lau in this. And I had his interview. I think Superman, how he sees the human race, is his analogy of Clark Kent. About frail... The the bumbling, bumbling, the so, so that's how he sees the whole human race. It's Clark Kent. But he, as a journalist with a responsibility to the greater good. That's, that's right, right. That's right. Even as a journalist, Palpak Nasha doesn't have any Pulitzer Prize or Well, that's because, that's because there's one journalist who's better than him. That's right. <laughs> He's oh, oh. Who is constantly working with him. That's right. That's right. Kelly, so Superman would be your. Is that, is that your favorite superhero? No, Spider Man is my favorite superhero. There you go. But I don't think I can bring. I think that there's so, so much of spider man story that's already that's good yeah, then, it's no? already yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good, good question. question well superman can fly <laughs> <laughs> and he's an adult <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh i know there's a there's one line from carnage's first appearance no where uh because spider-man has to spider-man makes a deal with venom and then uh, and then he goes back on his word. And then J. Jonas Jameson says something like, Captain America would have found a way to keep his word to Venom. And then Spider-Man says, Captain America wouldn't have given his word to begin with <coughs> because he's a legend. I'm just a man. So I think very similarly, you can substitute the word uh, Superman for Captain America in that. Right. And you know, Superman would have figured it out. And uh, Spider-Man... The problem is he can't. He's a kid. He's a, he's a kid. He's a, if, if you're going to go to the Spider-Man lore of Peter Parker being a, a teenager or, or, or a young adult, my favorite thing about Spider-Man as a character is that his, he's got this overwhelming sense of responsibility right. to the greater good right. that he, over, he neglects his responsibility to himself. Yeah, yeah. I, when, you, when you think about that, arguably, arguably Spider-Man might be the most altruistic Marvel character. Arguably, yeah. but he's like, if he kills or remember the episode when he accidentally hit Dr. Octopus, this old Silver Age, yeah, Octopus, and Dr. Octopus really felt it and goes, Holy crap, you really can hit, you can actually kill me. Yeah, that's what I'm not, I'm not trying to kill you, I'm trying to stop you. He can actually do real damage, but it's a Superman, he's also repressed, he's repressing himself because once he hurts someone. It affects, it affects him deeply. 
Yes. Yeah, but it really affects what happened to Gwen Stacy. And we all know that. Everything that... It's not like Daredevil na... If, if someone, someone dies, dies he'll get, get sad, sad pero the next day, okay na siya. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. I, I think it's very similar. No? As a Daredevil, we talk a lot about Catholic guilt when it comes to Daredevil, mm -hmm. right? Pero si Spider-Man also has, like, some people say it's Jewish guilt, some people say it's Catholic guilt. There's a, there's a Dan Slott Spider-Man comic where he's, like, beaten up, he's mm -hmm. wrapping his ribs, and, he, and then he hears, like, the police saying, like, oh, there's a riot somewhere. Right. And he's like, oh, no, I'm just gonna stay and I'm gonna rest. And then he goes out the window and he says, no, the guilt would kill me. Okay. Because like, there you go. And I feel like as Filipinos, we probably relate to that a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How's my time in the camera? Okay, lang? Still running? All right. Yeah, so arguably, Spider-Man could be the most guilt-ridden, altruistic uh, superhero. Who's your favorite superhero? Daredevil. That's a good one. No, 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 I've been a fan since I was 12. Uh, when the Frank Miller, when I got the hands on the Frank Miller run, that was it. And he rarely ever has a bad run, so that's a good one. Well, well, except Shadowland, that's really still well, like, Okay, uh, when I was a kid, that's a good question. When I was a, when I was a kid, I really can't relate to Superman, because he's Superman. Batman is too rich, and I love uh, the Frank Miller, of course, Batman. That got me into Daredevil, because, because of that, that was the, 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 the no, diba? The gateway drug to it. When I got into Daredevil, this guy was poor. This guy was a law. Uh, he, he became a lawyer, and his dad was a prize fighter. My dad was. It was a lawyer. My dad was a prize fighter. So this, as a kid, I was like, oh my god, this. I'm relating to this character so much. He was bullied. I was bullied. I was a scrawny kid. I was bullied. And ito pa, he was ay, ano pa siya, he's blind pa. So that was kind of extra bonus na lang yun. But I was relating so much to this character. And he's the most picon. Yeah. He's human. Like, picon siya. And my first Daredevil comic, I don't know if they have it here. This one. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, I have this. Uh, can you can you take a picture? No, no, no. Just take a picture of this one. So I can, that one with, 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 the, with Claw. With claw, and I love that. The reason I'm, I'm framing that that's what that's my first daredevil. I was 10 years old when I got that 10 or 11, I was really young, so I, I kept that because I really like what he did. When claw said, Uh, you're not worth it because who the hell are you? and the pikun chan goes, I'm daredevil, god damn it, <laughs> you, you give me importance. I was oh, so this guy's is. is is neglected. <laughs> and I was neglected in, uh, as a kid, so parang do not want to resonate, and uh, I, I, that just stuck to, to me. Do you think after all these years, there's still something new you can do with Daredevil? Freak, that's a good question. That's a good question. Because you know what Zdarsky oh, basically did was oh, oh. was switch him out. That's right. No, I probably. <laughs> Yeah, that was not. The <laughs> there was even an, there was even an issue where da Doctor Doom swapped powers with Daredevil. Why would you swap powers with Daredevil? <laughs> and he can see three sixty. That's, that's so stupid. Anyways, uh, if I if I was given the uh, the honor opportunity to, to write Daredevil, I would probably make him more. Gra I would probably make him retire. Just retire him. Just, just his body so, so beaten up, up and swollen from all the fighting, fighting. he'd and retire and and, and we'll, we'll see what he does normally goes, goes to the grocery what happens pikun pa rin siya he tried to do it with uh, Mila with Donovan diba? he tried yeah. to get married and just calm down but no, I'm not really a fan of the hand also so I'll probably take that out I'm not it's too much man like too much and the whole magic magic thing with the hand come on you know, I think I, I tell people this all the time Frank Miller gets so much credit for being realistic doing crime comics and stuff I was like Frank Miller's not realistic you know. like Sin City Daredevil he does crime and then all of a sudden there are ninjas you know you know, you know, it was no, Daredevil no. for DC, uh, for Marvel, and Swamp Thing for for DC with mm. Alan Moore. Mm. Alan Moore, then yeah. who knows who, what the who cares about Swamp Thing until Alan Moore? You know why there was a Swamp Thing comic to begin with? No. So he got on he got on Swamp Thing with issue twenty. The reason there was a Swamp Thing comic to begin with what? is because they made a Swamp Thing movie. Do you remember the Swamp Thing movie? No. 
I don't remember. Like where like Swamp Thing was like in a rubber suit. Parang, parang the blue, parang the Black Lagoon monster. It was like a Black Lagoon monster. And then the movie flopped. So they were like, well, you know, we got to keep the comic going. So they called oh. Alan Moore. And they were able to afford Alan Moore that time or wasn't he that expensive? Alan Moore was still like working in the UK. Uh, so this was his first ever American. American Swamp comic. Thing. With Swamp Thing. Galing, galing, galing. Oh, I didn't know that. Great, great. That's fun. I love Swamp Thing. Uh, the Alan Moore run especially. And I love the fact that he, it's different than Alan Moore. He made it different. It's... Swamp Thing is not a man that thinks he's a plant. He's a plant who thinks he's a man. <laughs> That's the difference. That's what Alan Moore did. When you think about that in that context, oh, now I get it. Now I get this. I, now I get the story. Yeah, it's brilliant. The, the way that, that comic unfolds is brilliant. Another brilliant uh, unknown character that was given to a great writer, Animal Man. Uh, Grant Morrison. Kalingnon. That was like, it went crazy though after, but... It was still good, but whoa, I think I have it here. Delicious. Yeah, my only thing about that Animal Man run is I wish the art was a little better. I'm uh, the art, I see, you know, I'm not going to name the artist. It's okay. But, uh, yes. It's just that crazy. It's that it was crazy. that crazy. Yeah, he was going existential craziness. Oh, that was, that was a good time. Ah, yeah. well, Inulit. Who was the first who broke the fourth world? Did I Reed Richards? The fourth wall in general? Um, in comic books. It's Reed Richards because he met uh, the one above all. I mean, so, so I, I, never, I never want to say like somebody broke the fourth wall first because I'm pretty sure that somebody in like... Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, but, I think yeah but I'm pretty sure that somebody in like the 1890s did it and we just don't know about we it. We don't know about it. That's right, that's right, that's true. But yeah, but... but Tamaka, when, when when Animal Man did that, it's parang, it was an homage for me for us. Oh, the, they did the whole Jack Kirby with uh, Reed Richards, diba? Right? Yeah. Because he's that smart. He, he realized that, hey, I'm a comic book. <laughs> I don't think I'm real. <laughs> what if we're all comic books? Like, what if we're all like, this is not real, this is just a comic book? That would be great. Mm, well, I don't know if that would be great, but Someone's okay. Someone's reading us, though. <laughs> reading a podcast I don't want somebody to be reading me <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a freaking awesome having you it's, 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 uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you uh, there's always something to learn when you talk to this guy so if you want and vice versa uh, thank you thank you and if you if you, if you guys want to meet uh, the Comics Cube guy himself uh, he hangs out here in Coffee and Comics and uh, you can waze it I think I have a graphic right here and uh, Come down, come by, hang out, give me some money because uh, I really need it. Thank you. Go to the Comics Cube, youtube.com slash the Comics Cube. Yep. Links are down below, guys. Bye. Thank you.